Now, Alex was taking the day off today to spend some time with his family, but now I'm in the studio and Alex is the man on the street because as he's out there, we've got a Boeing E-4B that's been flying circles around Austin as well as flying through the buildings downtown. It's a giant, much larger than a commercial airplane, a giant uh, military-type plane that is uh, flying around. And really, it's kind of a PSYOP operation, isn't it, Alex? Well, it is, and, and it's just showing that Homeland Security can do whatever it wants. Two years this in New York it was a huge freak out as it flew. Oh, we're cutting out a little bit there. And, and 70 oh, and... Here we go. We, we, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, can you we, hear missed, me now? we missed just that last bit. You, you were talking about how they did it two years ago in New York. That's right, and it was a PSYOP. And uh, let me do this. I'm going to pull over. I've actually been downtown now talking to people who saw it, and they said it really frightened them. And we've had a lot of uh, Austin listeners calling the studio uh, and sending emails to show tips at Infowars dot com of videos and photos they got because here's how the psyops going to work we're seven eight miles from downtown austin in an industrial district you know where we get the cheapest rent in austin in in southeast austin we're in an industrial area and it was flying you know thousand fifteen hundred feet right above the office so people are going to say seeing our video oh because i know how the psyops work and how the mind's already prepared to whitewash things under a culture of conditioning where is that around buildings? That's the high-def footage we got at our studios in South East Austin, okay? I saw it flying beside buildings, above buildings, and between buildings to where I saw it. It was so bizarre. It, you know, it, it's like that double take where you're like, what, a giant airplane's over me? And then you watch it fly between buildings. It was so bizarre. But I've talked to Austinites, and they said, yeah, I saw that, or everybody's talking about it. So, so I'm downtown right now, and we need to look up for Paul Watson's article, the height of the Austonian, because it's the highest building in Austin. It was flying beside that. It was flying right at about that level, maybe a few hundred feet above it from what I saw with my eyes. Again, when it came back on another pass, then it came back and passed around higher, and then it went off and flew at about 5,000 feet or other parts of Austin. Uh, but again, it, it, just if the doomsday plane was flying in circles around Austin at 30,000 feet, it'd be national news. When these things are seen, it's national news. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, this is huge. And even doing and, it. And, and I don't want people to just whitewash that. Even doing it down here where we are in, in southeast Austin. I mean, we're not that far away from the airport. So it is, you can't tell that from looking at the videos. But that's still a big deal because that's still pretty reckless behavior that close to an airport. No, no, no. I totally agree. It was flying in circles all over Austin, and it looked like quadrants. First south, then central, then northeast, then central, north, north central, then... Um... Yeah, we've got... Uh... And again, I'm double-taking this whole time. Yeah. What one person says here is, uh, came in and show tips, asked the question, is the plane a PSYOP to distract from the Egyptian coup that's going on? Another one says, we've had a couple of people send in stuff. We had someone from New Orleans, someone from Las Vegas. Here's another one saying that on September 8th, 2012, in Wellington, New Jersey, northeastern New Jersey experienced the same thing that we just had here. He said he didn't get any photographs of it, but it did freak people out and made the family talk about 9-11, even though I was helping my brother move that Saturday. So that, that's exactly what they want people to think about. Well, listen... I, again, I keep saying this, it's one of the wildest things I've ever seen to be in the middle of big buildings. I mean, right by, you know, in the middle of downtown, that's where we came to stay for a few days. So we could, you know, go see museums and stuff with the kids and go fishing in the river nearby just for fun. And you look up and there's an airplane with wings bigger you know, than the biggest building is. Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is. It's an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states. And the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. 
Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, InfoWars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at InfoWars.com. InfoWars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our info warriors, who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence, that know this information is true, but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the new world order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. It is Wednesday, July 3rd, 2013, and we have something of a role reversal here today. I'm sitting in Alex's chair, and he's out on the street doing reports. Uh, Alex had the day off to spend some time with his family, and while he was out, he was a witness to a Boeing E-4B flying at a very low altitude through downtown Austin. And he's been following reports, talking to people on the street about what they saw. We had him just a few minutes ago. We were establishing, uh, trying to reestablish a connection with him, and we should have him back shortly. Just think about what this is, though. Think about how the communist governments like to, on May Day, parade their military and all their latest hardware up and down the streets to intimidate their population, to intimidate other nations. And here we have this giant Boeing E-4B behaving in a way that would get any other pilot arrested. 
and he would never fly again. Flying at extremely low level through downtown Austin. These pictures that we've got up here, if you're looking at our video feed, these are pictures that were taken of it flying at a very low altitude over our office, which is not too far from the airport. And that's reckless behavior there as well. You don't see it flying through the buildings. That was where Alex was. It flew in circles here for quite some time, then moved north through uh, Austin and then moved into the northeast area of Austin and then to the northwest area of Austin. And Alex also saw other aircraft, uh, a strange looking helicopter as well as some other military drills going on. We know that the number of military drills that the government is doing and drills that they're doing with the police are increasing in frequency and in scope. We also know that the military trains for the kinds of scenarios that they see themselves getting involved in. Here we've got a video feed just this last weekend in Charlotte, North Carolina. A fellow was walking along and was surprised to look up in the sky and see a lot of helicopters landing and troops getting out of it. And he began taking film of it and of course the uh after the troops get out take defensive positions and their training and everything the uh, commander came over or, or some military officer came over and told him he had to leave that it wasn't safe in that area well that's right it isn't safe when they do things like this they shouldn't be doing things like that in areas where it's going to present a danger to the public unannounced and in secret but he had every right to be there it was a public place and uh, he was exercising his right to film this. And you can see if you're looking at the video feed, they've got a couple of uh, copters on the ground and a couple more in the air. And there's the military officer telling him, uh, you've got to get going. See, if you're in uniform in America, uh, you can order anybody around that you want. The rest of us who are not in uniforms of any type, we're just slaves. And we're supposed to obey any off order that they give us, no matter how unlawful it is. And so he calls over someone in a blue uniform and this guy says you've got to shut it down this is the video feed that we see right here and he goes i'm in a public area and he goes uh he says you got to shut down because you're in a public area and he goes exactly i'm in a public area this i'm not trespassing and he said no you're trespassing and he basically then gets rough with him and uh handcuffs him arrests him takes his phone out of his uh, pocket throws it on the ground tries to break it it didn't break so we have a record of what happened that's the kind of intimidation that we're seeing from a police state. It's kind of hard to tell the difference anymore between the police and the military. The police are acting like the military. They're arming themselves like the military. And we've got the police, the military, thinking that they can boss us around. Of course, the, the police don't have a right to uh, boss us around either, but they assume that. They're, they're presuming that, I should say. And we, should, um, we need to get together. Something to think about on this 4th of July. What are you going to do? to resist this burgeoning tyranny. What are you going to do to get the police under control? And we got Alex back on the phone line. Tell us uh, what you're seeing there now, Alex. Absolutely. Again, uh, the magic of audio, Scott, but occasionally it isn't working too well. Uh, <laughs> can you hear me now, David? Yeah, coming through clear. Yeah, no, it's funny what you're saying right now. I, I, you know, I have this epiphany all the time, but it gets more and more intense every day just how right we've been, just how accurate we've been. And I'm not patting yeah. myself on the back. We are just recognizing what is in our face completely open. And I want to say something about what uh, Edwin Vieira said earlier. He's a great constitutional lawyer, one of the foremost in the nation. <laughs> I still think he's buying in to some of their propaganda. And I've chastised some of my reporters for this. And then I've sat there and proven it to them. Uh, and I don't know everything, but I, I, I have immersed myself in this for 20 years, probably like nobody else. And I've learned the tricks of the of the enemy, and I learn more every year now than I learned the previous decade. It's amazing, but uh, this is a simple trick. They put out these fake polls saying Americans support being spied on, mm -hmm. Americans support the TSA, Americans support drones. And if you go look at the groups that put those polls out, and you go out, go actually read how the questions were asked, or the demographics, they have phone trees and known respondents that they know what answer will give them. You go yeah. look, though, at other more scientific polls, it shows the polar opposite. Congress has a 10% approval rating in Gallup polls that ask the questions responsibly uh, and, and in a way that is meant to actually get what the people are saying. These push polls are spins. And, right. and what they're meant to do is, is convince people that you're all alone and to demoralize you so that you basically accept everything that's going on everything that's happening. So, you know, I hear my own reporters who are really smart. I hear Edwin Vieira, who's you know, probably smarter than I am in most ways, saying, oh, it's terrible, people are accepting this. You know, you know, as if they make it, you know, like we think we're getting safer. 
mm -hmm. because of this. But that's not actually what's happening. But there is a PSYOP there. People then see those polls and feel like they're alone and then feel like they can do nothing. They're not accepting it. They just feel broke back. They feel broken. They feel like they can be walked all over. This is a military program by the globalists against all of us. And when I say our military, I don't mean our military. It's important for the PSYOP to not be effective against us to understand we're all under this global, scientific, technocratic, high-tech system that, that, that the wealth of the West was able to develop. And the elite is on such a power trip to have all these advanced technologies of flicker rates on TV and semantical manipulation and trauma-based mind control uh, and the acclimation programs and the, the subliminals and, and the neuro-linguistic programming and all the layers that they stack onto this. But the issue is it's all blown back on them as well. When you look at how they're behaving and how the establishment is operating, they're now some of the most low-functioning people out there because they're humans too. There's no way they're going to set up this high-tech technocracy and get away with this. And so I think it's absolutely important for everybody to understand that, that this is not our opinion. And if anything, where I have failed the listeners, <clears throat> and I want to apologize for this, is not stating the full magnitude and breaking it down logistically from A to Z. Instead, I tend to cover certain quadrants of things but, but uh, again, no one's perfect. But you know, the real reason I wanted to call in uh, here and, and, and go into overdrive is that what you were just saying, they're organizing militarily against us. They're saying the patriots and liberty lovers are the new terrorists, which we knew was going on behind the scenes now public. They are engaging in open military domination domestically to prepare us so that if they engage in real warfare against us, uh, we're acclimated like uh, dodo birds and just sit there while the sailors beat our brains out, you know, as, as the sailors would land and the dodo birds have been acclimated not mm -hmm. to be scared. That's they right. had become, well, really the opposite of domesticated. You can domesticate something where it's not scared. That's what's happening to us. With the dodo birds, they've never been, uh, had predators after them, so it was basically a hyper. That's right. You're talking about training versus education. That's what we were talking Trying. about. Yeah. We got you back. Go ahead. I think we've got you. No, no, it's just that, uh, absolutely, jump at any time, David. Um, there's just some latency uh, via this audio Skype, uh, but I'm coming through clear, correct? Yes, yes, we've got you now. Okay, good, yeah, there's a, there's a two-second latency. Uh, so, so the issue here is that this is not our opinion, and people out there have to make a decision about all this evil, about the corruption, because it's not just them having the doomsday plane buzz Austin to condition the public that they can do whatever they want, that they're above the law. They are engineering the GMO to sterilize you and your family. They, it, it grows poisonous pesticides in all the major... I think we lost a little bit of contact there, didn't we, guys, with him? I think it dropped out for a moment here. As Alex is saying, this isn't just a PSYOP. There is actually are actually real things that the government is doing. And that's why we said you need to be the resistance. That's why we were taking calls before this happened. We wanted to know exactly what you're doing to fight this. We need to organize. We need to hang together. We need to establish things like constitutional state militias. We need to get out and protest the fact that our Fourth Amendment is being declared null and void, essentially. And along those lines, remember that there is a Restore the Fourth protest that's going on in over 100 cities across America. You can find out about that at RestoreTheFourth.net. You'll find detailed list of all the different protest organizations, uh, locations rather, that they're going to have it. I just got this in from Chris. It's an NSA protest. Good. And this is sent to us by uh, Joel Skuzen. He says um, that there's, Skousen, sorry, there's going to be a protest rally at the entrance to the new Utah Data Center. 9 a.m., 4th of July. That's very important because that is where they are taking all of our information to be stored indefinitely so they can mine that in the future. So to repeat that, there is going to be a uh, protest rally tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., 4th of July, at the new Utah Data Center. Very important to get there. That's uh, in Bluffdale, Utah. The National Security Agency's colossal Bluffdale, Utah data center is about to become operational. 
because the dismissive attitude of the U.S. federal government with respect to our formally guaranteed right of privacy, as well as the inestimable power of the emergent quantum computer technology, which will be employed at that site, the last vestiges of a way of life bequeathed to us by our founding fathers paid for by eight years of struggle against the British Empire and every other war we've been in is about to come to an end if we don't stand up and do something about it. This is the time to do something about it. You know, a crisis is a danger and an opportunity. We have an opportunity now to do something, but we also are in great danger if we don't do anything. And we've got Alex back on the line. Alex. Absolutely, very eloquent. You know, I was saying people should resist and speak out any way they can. I can't think of a better way than whoever's listening. And again, I, I want to say this about the InfoWars crew. We're in the trenches 24-7. You can hear me on air every time I'm on a short vacation calling in, you know, with desperate, you know, orders and, 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 and just you know, desperately trying to coordinate my overworked, really smart and intelligent, you know, crew and, 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 and trying to keep everybody focused and realizing how important this work is. Uh, I mean, it's very sad that InfoWars.com is the best there is because we're not arrogant. We are the biggest and best thing there is in this fight. And look how ragtag we are. Uh, and, and because we're aware of this info, and we understand it's diabolical, and we understand that they're now just hiding tyranny and its expansion in plain view, and that uh, five years ago when they built the NSA command base in San Antonio that's gargantuan, um, you have local newspapers, San Antonio Express News and others would go there, they would actually arrest falsely uh, on public property, you know, just on the sidewalk, uh, reporters. Our reporters went down there and I told them, hand them a news article about the Supreme Court saying they can't arrest people for, you know, covering NSA buildings. And the police backed off uh, just by saying, look, we're not your slaves. We're here. We're allowed to show this. That is a great idea. We can't lead every fight, though. I mean, I, I, and my reporters have been down there. I've been down there. We've been down there over and over again the last five years while they were building it, and then it was completed two years ago. It took them three years to build it. All of our listeners listening right now on 90.1, listening on the Internet in Texas, you should all be there at high noon uh, at the main entrance. Uh, you know, it's just a public sidewalk there to protest the NSA. They don't even want a discussion that they're there illegally listening to everything we're doing, not to stop terrorism. Our government runs al-Qaeda. That's right. Go there cover that print off print off where it's not illegal to film government buildings and hand them those washington post articles uh you know when they're there don't just go to the big data center spy center nazi center that they're building in utah go to the one uh in fort meade uh, uh maryland go to the one in san antonio texas everybody high noon on saturday it's time for you to be the leaders uh, David, right. not am I coming through to you clear? Yes, very, very much so. And there's one thing I didn't read from this announcement that we got from Joel Skousen. He said, please join Dr. A. True Ott, myself and others as we gather, and this is where it is, the inter near the intersection of Redwood Road and the access road to the facility that's just south of Camp Williams. And that rally is going to be at 9 a.m. tomorrow, 4th of July, a peaceful rally to draw attention to the capability and the threat posed by this establishment. That's something we probably should get out on the uh, website because uh, we're just in uh, overdrive right now. Yeah, that's a key thing. That's, that's by a, the way, why don't we call why don't we call Skousen right now his sell everything and see if we can get 10 minutes on this on the nightly news because I said Saturday, July 4th is the day to do it. It's mm -hmm. just that I don't think on my show we can organize something at in San Antonio and Maryland uh, I think we should have Mourning the Death of America yes. uh, Saturday. And again, I, well, I'm not going to be there. Our crew's overworked. We're in the front lines. We need relief. We need you out there. There will be local media coverage as the American people stand up to this criminal takeover. But absolutely, everybody should be there tomorrow outside Salt Lake City, Utah, with real American patriots. If you live in Utah or surrounding areas, don't go get drunk. Don't go watch stupid fireworks. Don't go sit there and watch F-16s that are meant for you and your family and drones. They don't have drones at these things, you know, flying over you. Now is the time to let them know that we're on the offense. Because we've gone from them trying to intimidate people and saying you can't go cover the NSA to them now, ad you know, admitting that, of course, you're allowed to videotape the NSA. This is the lawlessness of these tyrants. Look, they've got re-education cam camps built. That's in the official FEMA documents. That's in the Army manuals. They'll put us in these if they can normalize it and get the police and military to go along with it. We're fighting an info war so that they can't normalize all of this right now, we are in a total 
150% emergency situation as everything is confirmed. I just wanted to say this. I had the, the epiphany was this. You know, they admit Facebook's hooked in with the CIA and the NSA, David Knight. Mm -hmm. And listeners. And this happened three years ago to us at Infowars.com. It happened to Darren McBrain last year. Now it's finally in the news. To, when you go to log into your Facebook that they know is yours, <clears throat> they won't just make you show them your driver's license now and scan it and send it to them as they made us do. They'll say, is, are these your high school friends? Mm -hmm. Are these your college buddies at some party I was at you know, 20 years ago? And I don't remember these guys' names, but it was them. It reminded me of their names. They now have data that far back uploaded. And what it's doing is they admit Facebook is teamed up with the NSA and DARPA trying to build an artificial intelligence. Google's doing it as well. When the computer makes you and give it... And we just lost Alex there. A large part of that that's going on with Facebook is really training. And we're trying to educate people to not be trained by the government to give up your privacy, to think that it isn't any big deal if the government knows every detail of your life. And we got you back now, Alex. Go ahead. Absolutely. Sorry we had a drop. It, 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 it dropped at the absolute key point. The point is, is that Google, Facebook, all... When it shows you your high school buddies or your college buddies or your friends from five years ago and makes you identify who they are for it, that's like police... You know, but bringing you in for questioning, but, but it's a computer doing it. And so the computer is reaching out in nodes, giving Humat or had space, making you a node. So see, it's beyond Google glasses where you're now an agent of Google going around videotaping everybody in live time, feeding it back to the NSA. You know, people go in the bathroom or people go to a meeting or people wherever. It, you are now yourself seen as smart dust, your own body, your own future, your own everything, part of the machine. We are already being pointed out this is happening, but I had the epiphany, we've already covered, that this is already going on. Mm -hmm. I, and, and I really understood it when I was talking on the air yesterday about these Marines who were friends of some of my friends, I'll just leave it at that, and they said, would you like to meet with some Marines? This is like 12 years ago or 10 years ago. No, I guess longer than that now. Yeah, no, it was about a year and a half after I put out Police Day 2000. And in show. Oh, I... Are you there, Alex? The VHS screen captured. Can yes, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Fade it out for just a second there, but go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so you, so, you, so you can't hear me. Yeah, just next time it cuts out, I'll just keep going. Listen, the point here is, is that... <laughs> he was just making the point, and it just dropped out. I think we've lost him this time. Well, it is, it is very important that people understand what is really going to happen with this Utah data center and with the government mining and storing everything. Because the capacity that they have there, as we pointed out before, is uh, yottabytes or yottabytes, however you want to pronounce it. It's a trillion terabytes. To give you an idea how much that is, we've talked about this before. If you just take a small drive that's only about two inches wide, a two terabyte drive that's easily available for, as a consumer, an external drive that is uh, available for about $80 and two inches wide. If you stacked a trillion of those together in a, in a long line... It would extend well past the moon, almost all the way to Mars. That's the kind of capacity that they have. They want to record everything about you. And you should ask yourself, what kind of person wants to store that? And how are they going to use that? Will they use it to blackmail you? Will they use it to blackmail Supreme Court judges? Will they use it to blackmail presidents? How will they use this? Will they data mine it automatically? And if they data mine it automatically, are they going to falsely identify you? As someone who's committed a crime, that is always a risk there. And if they don't falsely identify you as a crime, think about the fact uh, how many felonies you probably commit every day without even realizing it. As we covered here not too long ago, we had a fellow who was charged with multiple felony accounts for releasing multiple balloons on a beach in commemoration of his wife's and, 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 and he and his wife's uh, anniversary. And we've got Alex back on the phone. Alex, you were just about to make the point, and it went out on you. Go ahead and make that point now. Well, it's just that I didn't get what these Marine Corps officers were telling me. Uh, I'm, I'm now back on phone. I didn't get what they were telling me 12 years ago, that don't you get it? Anything you...
you do with feeding the computers and making part of the exercise. It's one big computer. And, and I didn't understand that then. Now I understand. This is a this is like an alien takeover. This is like foreign spaceships landed and are doing this. It's globalists using artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. waging absolute war on us, but it's all incremental and low intensity, and so people don't realize it. I mean, this, this is insane what they're doing. It's so over the top, and, and I appreciate you doing an exemplary job, David. It's such an honor to have you working with us and the entire team. And oh, I know you. that we're all stressed out there at the office, but men and women, we're doing historic work here, and we're on target. That's why we're under attack. So I beg our listeners to pray for InfoWars, to pray for all our reporters, to pray for me and my family. And just God bless you all. I hope everybody has a great for tomorrow. And I hope that we wake people up. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. Whatever the case is, this is a place for people who love freedom. And that's why I have created PlanetInfoWars.com as a vehicle for you to meet and to talk and to write and to post information. This is your tool, your website. And I want to invite all the other alternative media to come in to planetinfowars.com and to synergistically meet and turn loose your potential. For more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. But I was so busy with my radio show, the documentaries, all of it, that I never did it properly. We launched a small little plug-in social network. It got more than 40,000 members in just a few months and basically crashed. And then I never revisited the subject until the last year. And I went out to a public event, a UFC fight. Joe Rogan invited me to it in Austin. And two different couples came up to me and said, man, we wish you'd set up a social network again. Where did it go? And I said, oh, it was just some little free program. It, it couldn't handle all the traffic. And in both cases, at that same evening, they said, we met four different people, two couples, on your little plug-in site at Infowars.com. And we now have children. And since then, it's happened a couple other times. So I realized a social network is important so people who love freedom can get together. That's what Liberty Lovers is gonna be all about, a section we've created at planetinfowars.com. Whether you live in a small town or a big city, you can reach out to people in your area so that we can win the future away from Obama and Mitt Romney and all these globalists that try to give us all these fake choices. And I give you this pledge. We are not going to spy on you and surveil you and sell your data to the New World Order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free. PlanetInfoWars.com is powered by you. We're going to have our articles up there. We'll have video feeds and stuff up there. But this is all about you getting together and organizing the resistance against the New World Order. Ron Paul's been great, but he himself has said this is simply a focal point for people that are already awake. Well, this is Ron Paul 2.0. This is Alex Jones 3.0. This is humanity 4.0 to the power of infinity. This is about taking action. This is about turning humanity loose. Connect with people who are awake and know what we're facing. Be active, organize, take action, go viral, create, contribute, resist, because resistance is victory. You are victory. And the rally point is planetinfowars.com.